Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our webinar today. My name is Shalini, and I'm from the 42 Gears marketing team. I'm joined today by my colleague, Arman Sami from the Global Accounts team. Today, we'll be showing you how 42 Gears UEM solution has been integrated with Samsung Knox features to offer fully customized solutions for your needs. Before we get started, I would like to request you to drop in any questions you may have during the presentation in the question box panel that is present on the right-hand side of your screen. And we'll answer them at the end of the session. And with that, I'll pass it over to Arman to get us started. Thank you, Shalini. Hello, all. As mentioned, my name is Arman, and I'm a partnership manager at 42 Gears. Today, we'll be talking about Samsung Knox features available on SureMDM, 42 Gears' as UEM solution. Let us first have a quick overview of Samsung Knox. Uh, Samsung Knox, being a defense-grade security platform, was introduced roughly eight years ago. Uh, Samsung Knox is extremely enterprise-friendly and provides several layers of protection for corporate data on mobile devices. 42 Gears being an SEAP, Samsung Gold Partner, uh, we have successfully harnessed and tweaked Knox features to provide customized solutions for our customers. Uh, we'll get into the details of there in a little bit. Uh, and today, our solution manages over 100,000 customer devices. These are devices taking advantage of Samsung Knox features. Let's have a look at some of the Knox SDK core components uh, that we use to control mobile devices. First one is hardware. You can enable and disable camera, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB connections. You can also enable and disable firmware recovery, automated updates, and OTA updates. Samsung Knox also allows you to install or uninstall applications, enable or disable pre-installed apps uh, like the Play Store, for instance, stop or start apps, and even blacklist or whitelist applications. The next component is the ability to enable and disable SMS and MMS, limiting the number of calls and SMS and disabling data roaming and or tethering. Samsung Knox also enables configuration of Exchange Active Sync, IMAP, and POP3 email accounts. You can control settings for Wi-Fi, APN, uh, access point name, web proxy, and Android VPN. For security, you can define password rules, encrypt data on the device, install certificates, configure firewall settings, and use Cisco AnyConnect. Moving on, Samsung Knox helps in setting up generic SSO frameworks and assigns apps to identity providers, IDP, uh, for instance, Active Directory. You can manage Google backups and enable mobile to PC sync via Samsung keys. You can also get cost related information like the SMS usage levels and even the call durations of calls made. Admins can keep track of device information, such as total memory usage, installed apps, and firmware versions. And next, we'll have a look at kiosk mode, where you can customize a kiosk by providing access to only one or a few applications and restricting access to the underlying Android system. You can also enable things like GPS, enforce territorial boundaries, very powerful when paired with the ability to wipe a lost or stolen device uh, to remove any confidential data or anything you don't want getting out into the world. And finally, the ability to take screen captures of the device and possibly my most favorite, the ability to achieve a full and unassisted remote control of the device. I'll show you that in a moment. But now I would like to get into 42 Gears' integration with Samsung Knox. First, we'll be looking, or we're taking a look 
at how to remotely control and manage Samsung Knox devices using SureMDM, SureMDM's utiliza utilization of Knox capabilities to let you monitor, track, and update Samsung devices remotely. ITS, with this, IT admins can view device screens on this web portal and also take control of the device remotely, enabling efficient device management. I'll also be going through some Samsung Knox features available in Sherlock. Once enabled in Sherlock, I'll show you how to achieve advanced lockdown of your devices without needing to root the device. Let's get started with device management using Samsung Knox. Amongst the host of features in SureMDM, which allows remote troubleshooting of Samsung Knox devices, remote support is one of the most important. Using this feature, admins can remotely control a Samsung Knox device through SureMDM. In the case any device is malfunctioning, the IT admin can even take screenshots of the device remotely and to better understand and take necessary actions to troubleshoot the problem. The next feature we'll be looking at is device reboots. In the case of device hanging or freezing during use, the admin can remotely reboot the device. This function is particularly useful in a situation where the end user is located in a remote area or the device is unmanned, like a digital signage solution and the, uh, the admin is unable to troubleshoot the problem hands-on. SureMDM also offers a comprehensive list of run scripts for Samsung Knox devices, such as shutdown, peripheral settings configurations, enabling and disabling of firewalls, and many, many more. I'll be taking you through all of those features now. You are now looking at the SureMDM homepage or the landing page. And to quickly give you a little explanation of what you're looking at, our, our console is quite simple. On the left-hand side of the console here, you are able to see the grouping structure of, these, of your devices, so how you decide to organize them within folders. Of course, this can be expanded. And once a folder or a group is selected, all of the devices in that group appear. And when finally one device is selected, you start to see all of that one specific device's information. So as you can see, this is a Samsung Tab A device. And simply by coming up here to remote, I'm going to remote into its screen. In a moment, on the left-hand side of the screen here, the screen of the tablet will appear. And on the right-hand side, I'll see the complete folder structure of the device. As you can see, here's my tablet folder structure. I'm going to pull up a quick Droid Cam feed so you can see the tablet in real time. On the right side here, for instance, if I open Chrome, push the home button, everything is done in close to real time. Similarly, I can take control from the MDM console so I can launch Chrome. And again, take advantage of all of the same hardware keys. So I can click the home button. As well, I can use the volume up or down, do Google searches, or even take screenshots of the device. On the right-hand side of the screen here, I'm able to pull files or logs. So for instance, our MDM agent takes logs for troubleshooting. An admin no longer needs to have the device in their hands. They can just simply remote in, select the file, and download it onto their computer. I'm going to leave, or please just keep in mind that Chrome was launched and it was on our 42 Gears website here because we're going to come back to this in a little bit. Then moving on to jobs, or actually I want to show you run scripts, which are in jobs. The tab up here shows all of the different actions that which I've created all these different tasks which I want to later push onto my devices. But I'm going to come over now to new jobs. I'm going to show you a few new ones. One selected. I'm going to select the operating system. Today we're working on Knox devices, so Android. And I'm going to come over here to run script. On run script, I'm now going to filter down the tab to Knox specific scripts. 
there's a whole lot of different things you can do over here. As mentioned before, for instance, the firewall, whitelisting apps, installing of applications, although I'll show you an easier way to do that, rebooting the device, and so on. But there's a lot of stuff for you to play around with here, and there's really a lot you can achieve. Finally, I'm going to show you that we can reboot the device from the console. So the device is selected. I'm going to come over here to reboot. I'm going to play push yes. And you're going to see that the Samsung device is now going through the boot stage. Next, we'll be looking into application management. SureMDM offers some really critical features for app management, uh, such as silently installing applications, which allows you to install applications uh, or update software remotely without any manual intervention. And this is very powerful because the end user is not required to interact at all with the device. Uh, the silent installation can be very useful and very powerful for IT pros who wish to install apps on managed devices with minimal to no, honestly, no ad, uh, user intervention. The same way, SureMDM also allows silent uninstallation of mobile applications on mobile Samsung device, Knox devices. In the case an application on the device, uh, are out of date or running an older version or for whatever reason needs to be removed, the admin can silently uninstall unwanted apps from managed employee devices. You can also disable applications installation and you can also disable application uninstallations on Samsung Knox devices. As well as being able to wipe recent applications. So this is very interesting because when the kiosk, or in our case, Sherlock is enabled and launched, what will happen is that all of the recent applications will be wiped, clearing the slate and allowing kiosk users to start on a completely new uh, application without any old logins or any other information. And finally, to be able to clear data on SureMDM, very useful on devices which are in a situation where perhaps one device is used by more than one employee. In such a case, the admin wants that once one employee logs out, another one logs in, or after XYZ minutes, all of the data is cleared from those applications to ensure that it is received as a brand new device by the user. And like before, I'm gonna show you a couple of these things now. So I've shown you that script of how to install applications previously, but we actually have a GUI for that back in jobs. I've already created it. And having selecting my tab A device, I'm going to come up here to apply and install one of our solutions, Astro Contacts. That is going to begin installation on the device. I can tell from this pending uh, yellow triangle. And while that's happening, I'm going to show you a few other things. So coming over here to apps, just to the right of remotes, I'm going to pull the active apps list of every application on this device. And why this is useful is I can come, for instance, here to system applications, come over here and, my apologies, type in Chrome, for instance, select Chrome, and then clear data. Once this is done, I'll kind of go over and show you the screen of the tablet. So coming back here to the remote view, I'm going to launch Chrome. And you can see here that Chrome has completely rebooted. So it started over from scratch. And similarly to what I did before for apps, I can also come in and I'll be able to uninstall or remove applications which are already installed.
By coming down, I'm not going to do it now, but for instance, if I wanted to uninstall Sherlock, simply selecting the checkbox to the left of Sherlock and coming over to uninstall, so the uninstall is from my device. Same as before, not requiring any user intervention. And finally, that wipe recent apps option that we spoke about before. So if I click on this icon here, what's happening is it's, I'm actually loading the current Sherlock settings of my device onto the console. And these are the settings which are managing the kiosk mode. You may have noticed this before on your own devices if you are already a Samsung user, but we have another field here called Samsung Knox settings. And once enabled, you have access to a whole variety of different settings. I'm gonna go into them in a moment, but down over here was the wipe recent applications, which I was referring to before. With this, of course, you're able to wipe all recent applications and again, let the user start off brand new with these devices and not be held back by anything which was done before or some configuration or admin things which were done previously. Now, I'm going to move on to kiosk management, which is kind of what we started before. These features offered by Sherlock and enhanced by Samsung Knox, together, you can take advantage of some really great features. And I know they're listed here, but I'm going to show them to you back on the device or on the console side. So for starters here, you can disable other home screens. Android devices come with a few home screens, either pre-installed or downloaded later. When the home button is pressed, the user gets an option to select the home screen from available options. And once enabled here, all the other installed home screens are disabled, thus allowing the device's default home screen to be Sherlock and only Sherlock. All other installed home screens are disabled. And now the user wants reboot or in any situation is only directed within Sherlock's home screen. Beneath that, we have the ability to disable safe mode. Safe mode being a diagnostic mode uh, that lets users or users can access from the boot of an Android device, disables third-party applications and kind of gives this clean slate for people to fix things that could be broken or to troubleshoot devices. Unfortunately, safe mode is a way to get out of any lockdown situation. So by coming here and disabling safe mode, user is no longer entered to, able to enter safe mode and thus prevent it from leaving your lockdown system. Beneath that, we have disabling a factory reset. It's pretty clear, once enabled, this feature uh, disables reset or disables the factory reset option within settings. And this is very useful in the situation where your deployment actually allows settings as an allowed application. This way, when the user wants to try to go into the settings and either get out of the lockdown or just completely wipe the device, they'll find that inside the Android settings, uh, this option, factory reset, is actually grayed out. Beneath that, we have disabling multi-windows. This is usually accessed by dragging a vertical bar on the left side of the device screen. And this option is used for launching applications and arranging them in multi-windowed view. Uh, when this is selected, so you come over here and you check the box, uh, the multi-windowed access option on the device will be disabled. Pretty straightforward. And then this one here is going to disable USB. Disabling USB of the device will disable access to the mass storage. So restricting you from being able to access any files, uh, content, media, whatever is stored on the device, as well as disabling USB debugging options. So which would restrict access to using command prompts, for instance, or ADB. We already discussed wiping of recent applications. So I'm gonna go down to disabling S-Voice. The S-Voice feature is a virtual mobile personal assistant, uh, which is capable of running a large number of tasks through voice commands. Uh, this option disables S-Voice features on Samsung devices, so it's pretty straightforward. And beneath that, we have NFC mode. Uh, near field communication, or NFC, 
is a means of passing data from one device to another device over radio waves by touching or putting two devices together. The admin can use this option in Samsung Knox devices to, well, first of all, by default, set to don't care, but to force NFC always on or always off. And we're also able to disable air view mode. And this option, uh, or air view mode feature on Samsung devices allows you to get a preview of certain types of content without having to touch the screen or actually launch the application or go to the website. So you can disable it. You can also disable air command mode. So air command mode, this option disables gestures, which provide access to things like the signature S Pen features, uh, or like the smart selects, screen rights, or Samsung notes. You can also disable smart clip. Here, the user has the option to, well, you can block, the admin can block smart clip features on devices. Um, if it's set to false, the user will not be able to use things like the stylus pen, smart clip, or the copy paste option. And here's a very important one here, being able to allow multiple users. Use this option to disable multiple users functions on Android devices, Samsung Android Knox devices, which allows multiple users space on a shared device such as a tablet. I'm going to show you exactly where this is in a moment, but first I'm going to deselect it so that it's not allowed, it's actually disabled. Beneath that, uh, we're going to talk about disabling OTA updates. So this option can be used by an admin to disable over-the-air updates on Samsung devices. So if you are on a restrictive mobile plan and your devices are moving around the world, you don't want these updates to happen at any time. First, because they might be hindering the performance of your device. And second, because it can actually create or actually end up costing you a lot in data usage. So I heavily recommend disabling OTA updates as well. If an update happens and you're using an MDM, you should be in charge of when that goes through. And beneath that, being able to disable the USB. Simple enough, this option disables the SD card slots if present on the Samsung device and makes sure that nobody can just stick in an SD card and try to download content or anything like that. Also, you're able to disable things like hardware keys. So if you click over here, you can come down and disable things like home, back, menu, power, volume down, volume up, and recent apps. So if you are in a kiosk situation and you're putting on a big bulky case so nobody can access these hardware keys, simply coming here and disabling them via this option might be the way to go. And of course, as mentioned before, you're able to disable application installation and disable application uninstallation. So this might be useful where some applications provide you the option to disable them or to uninstall the applications from inside the application. But you can disable that entire process here. Now that we've kind of gone over some features on the MDM and the kiosk mode, I'm going to go into branding a little bit. Now there's a, a lot you can do with branding um, your Samsung Knox device. Uh, for instance, one that we're going to go over now, by default, Samsung devices display an animation of the Samsung logo when the device is booting. Uh, you can actually select this or use a feature here to play a desired animation while booting the device. Uh, similarly, you can also set this feature to play a desired animation file during device shutdown, which is what I'm going to show you now. Or actually, before I do that, I'm sorry, I kind of skipped something here. I want to go back here and I'm going to show you the screen of the device. Sorry, everyone, getting ahead of myself. So my Samsung Knox device, by the way, you can see that Astro Contacts is installed here. I'm going to launch Sherlock. Going to access the admin settings by tapping on the screen five times within three seconds typing in what I have currently set to as the default password of four zeros. And inside the settings, coming over to Samsung Knox, 
I'm going to, first of all, before I even do this, take a USB, which is plugged into my computer, and plug this into my device there. You see that right away on this other side of my screen, the Galaxy Tab A has popped up. So now focusing back on the right side here, I'm going to simply select the disable USB option. And voila, just like that, you see that I'm no longer connected to this computer. The next thing I want to show you is going down just a little ways, as I mentioned before, the allow, uh, allowing of multiple users. So I'm going to deselect that. So right now, multiple users are disabled. Going to lock the screen quickly, bring the screen back on. And you might have, may have noticed on your devices a little yellow icon on this top right corner. Once selected, this little pop-up, this little widget will come up and you see that there's a 42 gears tab A user, which is what I was using, a guest user, and the ability to add new users. So what's the bottom of the screen here? Once I select on guest, a little pop-up comes. Security policy prevents creation of new users. Similarly, if I click on add user and come down here and press OK, I agree, thank you, I get that same blocked notification. This is a really easy way if you're not using uh, this feature on Samsung devices, I really recommend you do just to make sure that nobody is creating a new user and playing around. Now, as mentioned before, I'm sorry, I kind of jumped ahead. We're also gonna talk about down here at the bottom, setting custom boot animations. Once I select the box, a little pop-up window gives me a few options. First of all, being, being able to select the animation file. So once it pops up again, I'm gonna click on these three buttons on the top or in the right corner, and it's gonna direct me to the SD card of the device, where I can now select my animation file. I'm also gonna select the looping file. And finally, a sound file. We're going to give this a moment to boot, or to actually save and apply the settings. Now that that's done, I'm going to reboot the device. This file was made by www.online-convert.com. You can find more example files and also convert various media files to other formats on this website. There you go. As you can see, the device is now rebooted. It's going to load in a moment and go back into Sherlock. So with that, uh, we've actually gone through more or less what I want to talk about here on Samsung Knox. So uh, I'm going to open this up to the listeners and uh, we'll continue on to the Q&A session. So if you have any queries related to any feature that either I discussed in the demo or you think is relevant, 
uh, I would please request you to add them to the question box now. I see a couple questions are have already been entered here. Um, for starters, do we support Knox KME? So uh, for those that don't know, uh, Samsung Knox KME is Knox's mass enrollment platform. And KME allows a very easy, very smooth out of the box experience on Samsung Knox devices. So more or less when configured on Samsung's portal and the device list is updated, as soon as you turn on a device for the first time, a device will be booted up and our SRAMDM NIX agent will be pre-installed. The NIX agent will already be put into the specific uh, group that it's supposed to be placed into. It will be named how it's supposed to be named as well. So very easy. You no longer need to go to a website and pull content or download our NIX agent or sideload the NIX agent. Taking advantage of Samsung's KME will do that for you. Next, let's do this one. How does Samsung Knox play with AE? So this is uh, AE, I'm assuming here stands for Android Enterprise. And Knox and Android Enterprise work quite well together. Um, you can use Android Enterprise alone on any regular device, but one of the drawbacks is that on Android Enterprise alone, you're unable to get what I showed you a little bit earlier, which is the which is the screen capture and control. You're able to capture the screen, you're able to see the screen of the device, but you're unable to send a push or click notifications to it. So you're not able to, for instance, like I showed you before, launch Chrome. However, when you use Android Enterprise and Samsung Knox, you are. So you're able to get all the benefits and security, all, of, all those fun stuff that come in with Android Enterprise as well as being able to add the additional benefits of Knox. So you're almost getting the best of both worlds in this case. And here's another one that I can quickly answer. Uh, can the GPS be enabled remotely on Samsung Knox devices? Uh, short answer is yes, but we can even do more than that. So I see another, uh, we, there was another question that also asked, can Knox change system settings or override? Uh, yes, there are some system settings we can change and some we can change. So um, for instance, GPS being one of them, we're able to turn first of all GPS on or off, but more than that, we're even able to configure how the GPS uh, or what tools the GPS is using. Is GPS working on standalone GPS? Is it battery mode GPS? Or is it advanced or assisted GPS, which is by default? So you are able to change a variety of system settings. And I do see a few other questions here. The you know, license for. Uh, another good question here is does the, do customers need a license for Samsung Knox? So it depends on the level of Samsung Knox capabilities you're looking to get. I believe that KME, although I'm not 100% sure, I'm going to follow up on this and send you an email just in case. But uh, on Samsung, most of the features that I showed you, the remote screen share, touch, silent installation, uh, everything you saw within Sherlock settings is, does not require any additional purchases. These are Knox features which are already saved and on your devices. So it's of no cost. It's as part of the cost of the tablets. But I believe that the setting up of the booting animation and things like that uh, do come at a slightly additional cost, as well as the uh, KME. So if you are looking to take advantage of KME, there is a slight cost to that as well. Um, although none of these are really big burgeoning costs, there are something associated. I'll be sure to get you that information and uh, again, email it to you after. I think that uh, 
that will bring us to the end of our webinar. Um, if you do have any more questions, I know there's a couple here that I didn't get to yet. Um, I will be following up with you and responding to you via email as soon as possible. Okay, uh, thank you, Arman. Um, if you do have any more questions, please feel free to drop in a mail at webinars at 42gears.com or visit us at www.42gears.com. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it was a pleasure being with you today. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.